want to show you guys some of the documents showing the white races of Europe. And we can get a better perspective as to who the Moors were fighting. These are the albinos and the beasts of Europe. And the Moors were fighting these people for hundreds of years prior to the so-called transatlantic slave trade. And one interesting thing I wanted to show you is that when you look at these beasts and albinos, and how they have achieved what they've been able to achieve in just a few hundred years, keeping in mind that they were considered wild men just a few hundred years ago, and they had no last names. Many of them didn't even have first names. And I wanted to show you this because I found this very interesting. If you see here the wild men, and you look at the clothing, that the people are wearing to the left. You can see here, they're wearing this clothing to cover up their hairy bodies. So I found that very interesting. And something else I found in the British Library was one of the oldest genealogy charts, one of the first ones made for white people. And as you can see at the bottom of that genealogy chart, you see two wild men. So they're showing that their ancestry comes from the caveman. So that should give you something to think about, considering that just a few hundred years later, today, we have people like the Queen of England, who claim to be of the royal bloodline of Egyptians and Cushites, who ruled the earth. They even found the remains of a boy who was buried at Stonehenge in Europe. He was buried in Europe, but he actually came from the Mediterranean Sea in Africa. And he came to Europe 3,500 years ago. So that's in 1500 BC. So we're told that the Moors arrived in Europe in 700 AD. But here we have black people out of Africa coming to Europe over 2,000 years before the Moors arrived in 700 AD.